I'm going to start this talk off with a story. It's about a boy called Mustafa. The story originates in the crowded streets of Bangladesh, Dhaka, to be exact. It was a casual day. Well, casual in the sense that it was ordinary. In fact, it was quite hectic. As usual, the day started off with a wake-up call. For many in the West, it's in the form of an alarm clock, but for Mustafa, it was a squeal of the rusted rails as the morning train rushed through his slum. In an instant, he got up and got changed. It was a balmy, hot summer day and he had a lot to do. Like begging for money. He went down his usual path of dumps and landfills to the station, but then something caught his eye. Something shiny. Something silver. As if a Neanderthal compared to a modern human, he slowly turned his head and something caught his eye. It was a mysterious object and he slowly inched closer to it. Stoffer reached out his hand and he picked up the peculiar silver object. It had a silverish texture and a half bitten apple on the back. It was a MacBook, but for Mustafa, it was an opportunity. He learned so much about the world in that one day. He kept modding it, learning so much more about it. The reason I'm telling you about the story is I want to teach you guys about how useful tech is and the endless possibilities of what we could do with it, and also why we should not waste it. For some, a laptop is a piece of tech for online school, but for others, it's a chance. A chance to be better. Hi, I'm Sadan Chandra, and today I'll be talking about the current technological pandemic of the 21st century, e-waste. According to the site DoSomething.org, 20 to 50 million tons of e-waste are disposed worldwide every single year. Cell phones and other electronic devices contain high amounts of precious materials like gold and silver. And Americans themselves dump phones containing over $160 million worth of gold every single year. Obviously, this is not right. We are wasting so much money and causing so much pollution every year when some of these devices work perfectly. We are constantly getting sucked into the craze of new smartphones and new computers. Did you know that reusing the precious metals and polymers found in old cell phones instead of manufacturing or mining new ones would save enough energy to power 24,000 households in the US for a year? There are a few things you can do to limit the amount of e-waste you produce though. Good, be a savvy shopper. When you're ready to purchase a new item, do some research beforehand. Make sure it isn't one that can quickly break or become damaged in a month or two. In other words, seek for items that are likely to last a long time so you don't have to replace them every few years or even months. Two, you could find opportunities for reusal. If the item is still in good or working order or maybe even requires minor repairs, think about giving it to someone else. If friends or family don't want it, there are numbers of charities who will take them and get value from old items, especially mobile phones. You could try returning these items to the manufacturer. If the item is broken or unusable, a first port of call should be the manufacturer. Ask if they have a process for returning old electronics and their materials for credit. Most won't take back goods, but at the end of their working life, but some will. And the only mar- market, practice, and accountability will change is if consumers advocate for it. You could take some items to a dedicated e-waste recycling facility. If there really is no way to reuse or return the item, find a reliable local organization who will recycle it. There are plenty of places that will take old electronics. This talk should have convinced you to reuse and hold on to your devices for as long as you can. Thank you for listening.